My name is Thomas Hirschhorn. I'm Swiss. I'm born in Bern, the capital of Switzerland. I'm living in Paris and I'm working in Aubervilliers, which is a suburb of Paris. And I'm living there since uh, 25 years, in fact, the half of my life. Since when I was young, I loved art, yeah? Uh, but I felt excluded, you know, for a reason, e which a very easy reason, because in my family, art was no uh, issue, in a way, yes? There was no, um, there was no, uh, there was no alternative, yes? In it. So um, I have to invent, I did have to invent them myself. So when I, uh, when I speak about collage, it's and to come back uh, to what is really what I love to do and uh, what, I, uh, what I share with a lot of people because everybody in his life did collages once. But then very quickly you, you go to something more serious than collage. That's actually what I love a lot in collages because there's still a suspicious about doing collages, you know. So um, to me it was just to, to, to keep truthfulness to this, you know, and to keep true and to keep, uh, to, to keep with what I love. So uh, the work is always based on collage, but collage not, of course, a collage I made on a table, yes? And uh, even when I'm working, for example, with my neighborhood, in a way, this is a collage, a collage, uh, a big collage, uh, a collage who is living uh, uh, with very uh, with a lot of material, with a lot of elements, with a lot of people, with a lot of complication, with a lot of problems, uh, but still with the idea uh, to put together what you cannot put together. And this is what I can do, and this is what I want to do, and this is what I want to fix, and this is what I uh, what I'm interested in as a, a, a formal proposition. This is my assertion and as an artist doing collages but also in the third dimension and also in implicating the other with it. I'm interested in precarity, yes? I love the word precarity because the logic of precarity is the preciosity, yes? The fragility, the, the attention you have to take on things, but not only the physical attention, also psychological attention and an attention of love, an attention of uh, of um, an attention of uh, of your your own commitment or your own implication. So I'm interested in precarity, and uh, precarity is something uh, who has not the logic of death inside, but it is a fragile um, uh, state. It's a graceful state, and precarity means from the for the other that he has to be or she has to be uh, uh, open. She has to, uh, he has to be uh, attentive when something happened to, to get the moment, the encounter perhaps, the event who, is, uh, who happened. And this moment, uh, there are always precarious moments. There are no, the real moment when something happened, there are no uh, fixed moment. There are no moment for the eternity. There are no moment for the, um, for, uh, who are fixed for all the time. So this, uh, I want, and that's why I love the work, uh, the word precarity, and that's why I think I want. To, I'm interested in having repetitions of precarious moments, and this is how I conceive my work, and this is how I see my work, and also uh, this is how I see the other artworks, because also uh, the caves of Lascaux are precarious, or uh, uh, the pyramids in Egypt are precarious. So, and a lot of other monuments we know is very good from the recent history. They are very precarious, even when they are 40 meters high, made in steel and made in concrete. So there is no uh, question of materiality related to the term of precarity. I really like the title because I think it's really intelligent. It's really smart. Why? Because um, uh, it obligates myself to make uh, to uh, to make a trip to go uh, like um, to look to go farther away from the world. When I think uh, Abu Ghraib, when I think 
when I do things to Guantanamo Mar Bay, when I think to Hurricane Katrina, when I do things to, um, uh, to uh, Goya with his uh, work disaster, uh, when I think all, all, all what uh, re is related so deeply in a historical moment, so I cannot get it uh, uh, without uh, making a distance, uh, even a physical distance. So I had to, I had to, um, I had to step back, but not only step back. Like uh, w with a um, with a fusée, I had to to go high, to go high in the in the atmosphere, and to understand the world differently, and to see to see it differently, like a planet. And this gives me the possibility, perhaps, uh, to engage differently with the problem, who I can uh, of the world, who I can see like points, yes, all related together. And then I, uh, when I make when I make this trip to the planet Mars, for example, or another, so then um, uh, I have to go back, of course, because I'm a human in the in the world, so I have to go back, and then. I, in doing this trip, uh, I, I can engage, I think it's a possibility, differently the question of the being a human being in the world. And so this metaphor of is there life on Mars, I think it's a very smart one because it's not about uh, the old fashioned term of globalization, internationalism, regionalism, etc., etc. It's another term. It's a term who is related to kind of mystery and also fun and kind of irony. And I think this fun and this irony are not to joke to make jokes of one. It's about an opening towards another public, towards uh, possibilities I didn't expect, perhaps myself, and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, wait for it. So this trip, this imaginary trip to go to Mars and to come back, gives me the possibility, or uh, so I see this exhibition, like um, to. Uh, to engage differently with the problems of the world, of course, not with the problems on Mars, with the problems of Earth, but only because I, I could make this trip. So this is uh, how I understand uh, the title, the beautiful title, and the questions related to the title, Is There Life on Mars?